In the early era, cameras spent most of their life attached to a tripod. But as technology improved, they were freed from this requirement and now spend most of their active time in your hand, attached to a portable computer. But in reality, cell phone photography doesn't look like this. It looks more like this, the view constantly shifting from the natural instability of your arm position. In this work, we look at long bursts, two-second, 42-frame, high-resolution image sequences naturally produced during everyday photography. And we propose shakes on a plane, a neural RGB plus depth representation of this data. Visualizing the training process, we see how from just a tiny bit of natural hand tremor, our model quickly distills high-quality camera motion and depth estimates. And with this depth, we can bring the still scene to life, repositioning, refocusing, and even relighting it post-capture. Or we can completely re-render the world with new material properties and computer-generated effects, all from just a small stack of slightly misaligned images. Before we discuss the SOAP model, however, let's review traditional neural radiance field optimization. Given multiple views of a scene from different camera positions, NERF models iteratively refine the position and density of points, minimizing photometric loss until they arrive at a high-quality implicit 3D representation of the world. But in our problem setting, our long burst data only has millimeters of camera motion, and only on the order of a few dozen pixels of parallax. This makes the optimization look a lot more like this, where adjacent rays each sample their own point in space at inconsistent and ambiguous depths. Visualizing training, we see exactly this behavior. The NERF model solves for fuzzy points floating in 3D world space. In contrast, our SOAP model aggregates points into a cohesive RGBD representation in camera space. We begin by sampling a point at coordinates UV and generate a positional encoding vector with a multi-resolution hash encoder. This vector is passed into a multi-layer perceptron, an MLP for short, which implicitly represents a three-channel RGB image. The same point is jointly used to generate a separate multi-resolution positional encoding vector, which we multiply by a per-weight mass to facilitate coarse-defined refinement during training. At initialization, we only pass through the encoding weights corresponding to coarse grid resolutions and slowly ramp up to passing the entire positional encoding towards the end of training. This vector is passed into a second MLP, which implicitly represents a single channel depth map. To this depth map, we add a background plane, the plane that gives shakes on a plane its name. This represents parts of the scene that are too far away or lack sufficient texture to contain meaningful parallax information, which would otherwise produce noisy depth estimates. With these three components combined, we now have our implicit RGBD model. We represent the camera motion as a continuous spline curve, jointly trained with the rest of our forward model. Here we input our long burst data. We select frame N and retrieve its associated camera rotation values from the phone's onboard gyroscope. With these and our motion estimate, we now reproject our implicit RGBD model to the camera coordinates of frame N, and calculate the loss with respect to the corresponding point in the burst frame. As our model is fully differentiable, we can backpropagate this loss through its motion, image, and depth components, jointly optimizing all three. To better understand this reprojection step, let's take a look at a 2D example. Let's assume we have a one-dimensional camera and points on an object at depths d1, d2, and d3. If we apply a known rotation and translation to the camera, we can triangulate exactly where these points land in this new frame of reference and we incur no photometric loss as we sample the same colors. If, however, the depths are not correct, we now also sample incorrect points in this new frame, which don't match our points in the reference frame, and each point incurs a photometric loss, which we backpropagate to update our implicit RGBD model. If the depths are correct, but the camera motion is wrong, this produces a per-frame photometric loss which is backpropagated to update the motion model. We can visualize this joint optimization and see how the camera motion model and depth estimates evolve together during training. Compared to ground truth high resolution structured light scans, we can see how a learned single image method produces reasonable looking depth maps without any parallax cues. But upon closer inspection, 
we can see clearly in the mesh results how the object structure is lost. The dragon's wing is disconnected from its torso, and the gourd loses all of its surface details. By leveraging the parallax information from a single long burst capture, and with no other training data, our approach can recover the object detail to a much closer approximation of the ground truth scan. From data already naturally produced during cell phone photography, we can recover the intricate structures of this dragon figure. And by segmenting the planar component of the SOAP model, we can swap out its background for a more fitting setting, completely reimagining the scene. We can also fit larger objects like this metal tiger statue. which we can segment in the same way as before to see what he would look like at a techno party. Or maybe on a vacation to the pyramids. In this setting of two gourds placed on a carpet, we see how Soap's planar depth components fit the ground plane. and we can use this depth to experiment with augmented reality, wrapping our objects in cellophane, or maybe even turning it into tinfoil. This lion scene barely appears to be moving at all, captured with only a millimeter of hand motion. Yet even under these conditions, shakes on a plane recovers valuable depth information enough to refocus and even restyle the scene. Lastly, we have the toughest challenge, a six and a half meter tall temple with only a couple of pixels of parallax motion. But our model is still able to separate the depth of the walls and the columns. And with this, we can simulate what the temple would look like during high tide. 